Introducing Pastor of Volt South Africa. Please welcome to the stage, Pastor Blessing Pretorius. So, first of all, wisdom. Where can I find wisdom? The Bible teaches us in Proverbs 2 verse 6, For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. For it is the Lord that gives wisdom, not TikTok, not Instagram, not the news, not um, social media, not even the law. Where does wisdom come from? Where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from God. Wisdom comes from God. So do not fashion your life according to worldly wisdom. Where do you go for wisdom? Do you go to your friends for wisdom? Do you go to social media for wisdom? And I know that, do you go to Pinterest for wisdom? Come on, how many of you like Pinterest? And you know what? There's a lot there, all right? There's a lot that social media, Pinterest, all of that, there's a lot that it has to offer. But at the end of the day, you've got to understand that your wisdom has to come from God. You cannot raise your family in a certain way just because you saw it on Instagram. You cannot go through this place of being a young person, whether you're a teenager or, you know, you're a young adult. You cannot do it the same, you know, in a certain way because you saw it on TikTok. Oh, this is how I should be a teenager. This is how teenagers live. This is how teenagers walk. This is how teenagers talk. These are the decisions that teenagers make. This is what college students go through, and this is what I must do as a college student. Oh, where did you see that? On TikTok? On social media? Which, by the way, it's all a lie, right? How many filters do you put on before you actually put the picture on? Come on, let's be honest. All right. So where is your wisdom coming from? That is my question to you. Because the Bible says that wisdom comes from God. Proverbs 3 verse 13 to 14 says, Blessed are those who find wisdom, those who gain understanding. And that is what wisdom will do. When you find the wisdom of God, you will gain understanding. For she is more profitable than silver and yields better returns that than gold that's what the bible says it says blessed are those who find wisdom finding wisdom wisdom bling, brings blessing into your life come on how many of you want blessing in your life all right me no i'm kidding i'm kidding my husband wants me in his life how many of you want to walk blessed by the lord Sometimes this is why we walk and there's no blessing on us because we have not yet found wisdom. You want to be blessed? The Bible says, blessed are those who find wisdom. Come on, how many of you believe the Bible? It's what the Bible says. Blessed are those who find wisdom and who gain understanding. Listen, wisdom and understanding, it goes together. Because based on the understanding we have, we make decisions. So if your understanding is bad, you're going to make bad decisions. That's why you need what? Wisdom. Wisdom and understanding goes together. See, there is an understanding of the world that Satan wants you to, wants to fill you up with. But don't let him do that. Stick with the wisdom of God and gain understanding. The Bible says it is more profitable than silver and yields better results than gold. This is what it says. It's saying that finding wisdom, it is more valuable than any treasure in the world. More valuable than gold, more valuable than likes on Instagram, no va more valuable than being a celebrity or an influencer. More valuable than a, the best car or the best house. That wisdom is the most valuable thing that you can find. So, if it's so valuable, why are we not seeking it always? 
because you have to start seeing wisdom, the wisdom of God as valuable. Amen? So this again, taking responsibility. I am going to decide if the Bible says that finding wisdom will bring blessing to my life, will bring godly understanding to my life, and that it, will, it is so valuable, I'm making a decision to value what God values. Value what God values. That is the opposite of a worldly spirit. The world does not value what God values. But when you walk in the wisdom of God, you will value what God values. Amen? So how does wisdom begin? Wisdom begins with a fear of the Lord, a reverence for God. Psalm 111 verse 10, this is what it says. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. There again, there's the word understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. We need to stop fearing people. You need to stop fearing being canceled. You guys don't have that here? You don't have the cancellation culture here? In South Africa, we do. You say one thing that is not going along with everyone else and they cancel you. But here's what the Bible is saying. You need to fear God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. Fear God more than you fear being canceled. Fear God more than you fear losing that horrible relationship. Fear God more than you fear losing your friends. Fear God more than you fear being uncool. Say with me, the fear of the Lord, the beginning of all wisdom. So stop being intimidated by the standards and the ways of the world. You do not have to adjust to them. When you live in the wisdom of God, those who are around you, they will adjust to you. Amen. Come on, how many of you don't want to have to water down how much you love God when you go to school? Amen. Amen. You don't have to water it down. You don't have to pretend you don't know God, undercover Christian. No. When you live boldly, because the truth is the world is looking for something different. It might not look like it. It might look like people are happy in their sin. It might look like people are happier in their way of life. But let me tell you, this world is desperate for something. It is desperate for Jesus. Amen? So that's why we've got to live what? Boldly. The fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of all wisdom. That's what our generation needs, a healthy dose of the fear of God. And because people don't fear God anymore, they are bold to say whatever they say. They are bold to do whatever they do. Why? There's no longer a reverence for God. And when I speak about a fear of God, I'm talking about a reverence for God, a respect, a high regard for God. And you might be sitting here and maybe you, you know, you've grown up in the church or maybe you have not yet encountered somebody who does not fear the Lord. And let me tell you, someone without the fear of the Lord, it is a scary thing. In the past couple of weeks, I've sat down with a few people, tried to help a few people where I saw the fear of God is gone. And as a result, it was as if all restraint was just cast off. I want you to know it's such a dangerous place to be at. Get a fear of the Lord back in your heart. And it's not a negative, oh no, God's going to strike me down with a lightning. It's not that. It is a respect for the one who created you. 
a reverence for the one who made you and who knows you more than you even know yourself. A high regard for the one who says, I knew you before I even formed you in your mother's womb. A high regard for him. Say with me, the fear of the Lord. Again, the fear of the Lord. So it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of all wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. How many of you want good understanding? To raise, to rise up as a godly person in an ungodly world, to rise up as a godly generation, right? In an ungodly generation, to do that, you're going to need good understanding. Good understanding, because there's a lot to navigate through today. How many of you agree? How many of you agree it's a little different than even 10 years ago? You're going to need good understanding so that you know how to navigate living in this world. Know how, as a young person, can I still serve the Lord? How, as a young person, can I still remain holy and pure? How, as a young person, can I still follow the ways of God, stick with His ways despite the pressures of this world? You want to know how to do that? You need wisdom. The wisdom of God. If you do not have the wisdom of God, let me tell you, this world is dark. You will not be able to stand. Psalm 119 verse 105. Now I want to speak about wisdom and the word of God. So first of all, where does wisdom come from? Where does wisdom come from? Wisdom comes from God. How does wisdom begin? Secondly, how does wisdom begin? With a fear of the Lord. Now, I want to speak about where to find it. Where must we find wisdom? In the Word of God. In the Word of God. Say with me, I must find wisdom. In the word of God. Say it again. Say, I must find wisdom. In the word of God. You need to open up your Bible. And I made the example yesterday. Do you remember that? Of the purple sky? Yes. That I could never convince you that the sky is purple. Why? Because you walk out and you look up and what color is the sky? It's blue. And because you see it's blue, you know for a fact I am lying if I say the sky is purple, right? And I made this example that it is the same with the Word of God. If you are not in the Word of God, you will believe every lie that comes your way. If If you don't know the truth, you will be lied to. Amen? Jesus says, I am the truth, the way, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. (laughs) Mix that up. That's what Jesus says. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus is the way. Jesus is the only way. It's not Jesus' way and then the world's way. It's not Jesus' way and then a little bit of my own way. No, Jesus says, he is the way. Jesus says, he is the truth. He does not say, I am a way, which means options. He says, I am the way. He says, I am the truth. He does not say, I am a truth. The world wants you to believe that Jesus is a way, that he is a truth, which means, yeah, he is a way, he is a truth, but you have options. It's not true. He is the way. The only way. He is the truth. The only truth. And he is the life. Not a life. He is the life. Which means apart from him, there is no true life. When you are in your sin, you are dead in your sin, the Bible says. You are dead in your sin. And until Jesus does a work in your life, 
you remain dead in your sin. That's why the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. But if you do not know the way, you'll take any way. If you do not know the truth, you'll believe any truth. And there's this line that is, hap- you know, that is being said so much on social media. It makes me so upset. Where people are like, find your own truth. That is unbiblical. Find your own truth. Find your own way. That is unbiblical. Jesus says he is the way. He is the truth. And if you want to know the way, the truth. Because apparently there's a gazillion ways to do everything nowadays. There's a gazillion ways to do marriage. There's a gazillion ways to be a teenager now. There's a gazillion ways to be a college student. There's many ways. But Psalm 119 verse 105 says, Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light on my path. Your word is a lamp for my feet and a light for my path. Which means what? The word of God. The word of God. The Bible. Reading the Bible. It will be a lamp for your feet. In South Africa, we have something called load shedding. Have you ever heard of it? We have something in South Africa called load shedding. All right. So our uh, electricity supplier in South Africa is going through something for a couple of years now. So right now, um, right now we are going like between four to six hours without electricity in the day. They just switch it off. Okay. That's a real thing. And um, can go off at the most inconvenient times, all right? Where the lights, electricity just goes off. And it's winter in South Africa, just, so just imagine. Now, I want you to think, how many of you have ever tried to navigate in the dark? Okay, where the lights are off in your house, but you're trying to maybe go to the kitchen, you know, you don't want to switch the lights on because everyone is sleeping, or you don't want your mom to see that you're going to eat all the food in the fridge at, you know, midnight, right? And how has that gone for you? Stubbed your toe, right? How many of you have a couple of bruises because of trying to navigate in the dark? Yeah? Okay. So this is why the Bible says that your word is a lamp unto my feet. Because we are living in a dark world. And the Bible teaches us that the world, that it's only going to get darker and darker and darker and more evil and more evil and more evil. But the word of God is a lamp unto our feet. Many of you, you are hurt. Many of you, you have bruises on your soul. You have bruises in your heart because because you have tried to navigate, you have tried to live this life, live through this world in the dark. And as a result, you've been hurt. But the Bible says that the word of God, it will be a lamp unto your feet, that you will not walk in darkness anymore. The world may be dark, but Jesus is the light. And the light that he is, darkness cannot comprehend it. Another translation says, darkness cannot overcome him. So if you have Jesus, you have light, which means despite the darkness in this world, I will never walk in darkness because I have Jesus, because I have his word. Yes, you can give the Lord a hand of praise for that. So the word of God will guide you and light your path despite the dark world. This is what Jesus says, John, verse, um, John 8, verse 12. He says, I am the light of the world. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. I will give them the light of life. Be in the word of God. Stick with Jesus and you will never walk in darkness. You will never stub your toe and get bruises 
because you are trying to navigate in a dark world. And let me tell you, when he says he is the light, again, he's not a light. He is the light. He is the only light. The only solution to the darkness in this world is Jesus and nothing else. So that is why you need his light. Amen? So, where does wisdom come from? Where do we find wisdom? It comes from God. How does wisdom begin? With the fear of God. Where do we find wisdom? In the Word of God. So we must be in the Word of God. That is the Bible, right? How many of you have a Bible? Okay, how many of you do not have a Bible? One, two, three, four. There are four people that do not have a Bible. And if the leaders can help us with that, make sure that every, all four of those people can leave today with a Bible or that you can assist them in getting a Bible because we want our paths to be filled with what? Light. We want our paths to be filled with what? Light. To be filled with light. And as we live in that way, what's going to happen? We will be grace to live in this time. Grace to be a godly person in an ungodly world. Amen? And in closing, this is what I want you to see. That as soon as we walk with Jesus and are in the Word, you know what God will bring into our lives? Vision. Say with me, vision. Say it again, say vision. God will bring vision into our lives because as soon as darkness is taken away because now there is a light, what happens? Suddenly you can? You can what? You can see. Suddenly you can see. And I want you to know that God wants to give you vision for your life, for your community, for your nation. Yesterday I spoke about the scripture that says that Satan has blinded the minds of unbelievers. Satan doesn't want you to have vision. Or what he wants to show you, it is ungodly and it will be detrimental to you. I want you to know today that God wants to show you his vision. God wants you to see what he sees when he looks at you. What do you see when you look at you? There we go. Bold enough to say. See, some of us, we look at ourselves and we don't see what God sees. You look at yourself and you see failures, you see disappointments, you see all your mistakes that you have made. And, and I'm talking about especially the deep things that you have never even told anyone. Today, God wants to change your vision, that you would see yourself the way that he sees you. Because you allow Jesus to be in your life and light your paths. You allow the word of God to build you up into everything that God says that he wants you to be. God today wants to restore your vision. That you would not be like the blind. But that you would see what he sees when he looks at you, first of all. That you would see what he sees when he looks at the world. I want to know, how many of you, what do you think God sees when he looks at the world? Did you know that the Bible says that God takes no joy in the destruction of wicked people? 
God takes no joy in the destruction of unbelievers. Sometimes as Christians, we can forget that. You think God is looking at the world and saying, yeah, you will go to hell? He's actually the only one who could literally say that. That's not true. God, when he looks at the world, his heart breaks. His heart breaks at the injustices. His heart breaks at the hurt and the pain that human beings are putting on one another. God looks at the world with compassion. He does not judge them. He is not trying to chase anyone away. And that is why we are here today. Because God wants to empower us that we can see what he sees when he sees the world. That your heart can break for the lost. That your heart can break for the unbeliever that is blind and is gathering bruises because they are hurting themselves in the dark. May God restore your vision of how you see yourself, but he, may He also restore your vision of how you see the world. And it's not, oh, let me feel sorry for you. It's not feeling sorry for people. It is a compassion that moves you to act because of the compassion that God has for this world. What does the Bible teach us he did? That before he even laid the foundations of the world, the plan for the rescue of every human being was already in place. His name is Jesus. So I'm not talking about a compassion that says, oh, shame, I'm so, I feel so sorry for you. I, I'm not going to be hard on you because of whatever. No, it's not that. It's a compassion that's going to move you to say, hey, you need Jesus. Hey, you need to change. You need to turn your life around. Look what Jesus did in my life. Look at how I am a godly young person despite an ungodly world. Why? Because I have the wisdom of God. Where do I get it? It comes from God. It does not come from social media. It does not come from Pinterest or TikTok. My wisdom is coming from God. How I navigate life, the way in which I am going. I am going in the ways of God. There's only one way to do life, and it is God's way. There's only one truth, and it is God's truth. Look at my life. Look at the grace that is on me to despite this world not be a part of this world, to not partake in what this world partakes of, because there is a grace for me in this time. There is a grace for me in this time. I do not believe that nowadays is the most difficult time to preach the gospel. I do not believe that. That is a lie from the pits of hell. The word of God is powerful. The Word of God is powerful. And the kingdom of God, the Bible says, is like a mustard seed, the smallest of seeds, but that when it is planted, it outgrows every other seed in the vineyard. That is what happens when God gets involved in our communities, in our countries, in our nations. It doesn't matter what else has grown in there. When the kingdom of God comes, when the kingdom of God comes, when the kingdom of God comes through you, guess what happens? Everything that Satan has done in that area, it is uprooted. Because the kingdom of God... When it is planted like a mustard seed, it outgrows everything. It undoes everything. It is more powerful. It is more... It is everything that this world needs. But we need people who will rise up and say, I believe I am graced for this time. So I am America's miracle generation. It is not difficult to preach the gospel. It is not difficult for people to receive the gospel. Because even as things get darker, it means there's more opportunity for the light to shine. The light that is Jesus. I want you to know that right now, heaven is not scrambling because of the wickedness of this world. Heaven is not nervous because of the wickedness of this world. God is not nervous. God is not looking at the world and saying, oh no, what are we going to do? God is not nervous. God is seated on the throne. God is strong. God is powerful. And that is the spirit that lives on the inside of you. 
we can change our nations God is not nervous so don't you get nervous when you look around and say Jesus how are we gonna do this no receive the Spirit of God and receive the grace that is on you for this time say with me I am grace for this time say it again say I am grace for this time so receive vision today because the Bible teaches us in Proverbs 29 18 where there is no vision no revelation of God and his word the people are unrestrained if you have no vision if you do not receive vision from God you will be unrestrained unrestrained in where your mind goes unrestrained in where your heart goes unrestrained in what happens in your soul unrestrained in your will and in what you do that will not be us we will receive the vision of God that we would not be unrestrained love how we want when we want with whomever we want no there is a grace on us to survive this world despite it being so ungodly and not only survive it but to change it and that has not changed hallelujah there where you are once you stand on your feet and we're gonna pray together there where you are once you raise your hand to the Lord and let us ask the Lord for his wisdom say with me Lord I thank you for your wisdom that you make available to me. There where you are, say, Jesus, I want your wisdom. Say, Holy Spirit, make me wise that I would be able to live as a godly person in this ungodly world that I would receive vision and see what you see when you look at me see what you see when you look at the world thank you your spirit is on me and I pray that as I get into your word and read my Bible that you would open up your word for me break your word open for me give me a revelation of your word give me a heart that hears your voice say it again say God give me a heart that hears your voice I need you to speak to me I need you to guide me in your wisdom because I choose today your wisdom I let go of the wisdom of this world bless me give me good understanding and make me a wise young person in Jesus name I pray and you know the Bible when it teaches us of Daniel the Bible says that for Daniel and his friends God made them ten times more wise ten times more wise than everyone else and they were young people just like you they were young people just like you and I want you to know that despite your age because of the spirit of the living God living on the inside of you God will make you ten times more wise than everyone else God will make you ten times more wise you don't have to wait until you're 30 you don't have to wait until you're 40 50 60 to gain wisdom no that is not how God works God he does not work like that with God it's not one plus one equals two no with God if he says I will fill you with my wisdom it doesn't matter how young you are he will make you ten times more hallelujah Amen. 
So there we are. We're going to take time to just praise the Lord. And we're going to thank Him for the wisdom that He has given us today. Say with me, Lord, I receive Your wisdom in Jesus' name. Make me 10 times more wise than my peers, than this world. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Come on, thank Him. Thank Him today that there where you are, He is filling you with His wisdom. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you, Lord, that you are filling our hearts, our minds, our worlds, Lord, with your wisdom. Hallelujah. Say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, you look wiser. Come on, turn to your other neighbor and say, you look wiser. And see, the biggest thing about wisdom is that it must be found. You cannot find something you are not looking for. So once again, this is where our responsibility kicks in. You are responsible for what goes on in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your will, you are responsible. And you cannot have something you have not yet found. So go and seek the wisdom of God, amen? See, He's already filled you with His Spirit. And with His Spirit comes His Spirit of wisdom. Now it's your time to take responsibility Commit to the Lord to go and be in His Word, to keep on finding His wisdom. You cannot live on the wisdom of yesterday. There is new wisdom available to you for every single day, because every single day is different. Amen? Hallelujah. There we are. Let's give the Lord one more hand of praise.